In this video, we're going to go through slides five through eight of the rest of chapter 17 slideshow. So in the last video that we had, we went through the practice problems that were kind of in the middle of chapter 17, and we formed a cyclic amide, but we didn't really talk about what that functional group is actually called. So cyclic esters and cyclic amides have their own special name. Um, a cyclic ester is called a lactone and a cyclic amide is called a lactam. And these are identified uh, by the number of carbons between the carbonyl carbon and the oxygen of the ester. So starting at the carbonyl carbon, you move over to the adjacent carbon and that is our alpha carbon. The next one is called the beta carbon, and you can do this just going through the Greek alphabet. So you have alpha, beta, gamma, alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. So this would be called a beta lactone. This would be a gamma lactone. And then we would have our delta lactone. And you use the exact same naming system for amides. Alpha, beta, this is a beta lactam. Alpha, beta, gamma, this is a gamma lactam. Alpha, beta, gamma, delta, this is a delta lactam. Our next molecule of interest is carbonic acid. Uh, carbonic acid is actually something that we see possibly daily depending on how much soda or um, I don't know LaCroix you drink. So um, carbonic acid is actually formed by putting water and carbon dioxide together under pressure, the carbon dioxide gets dissolved and it forms carbonic acid. But when it's not under pressure, carbonic acid actually isn't very stable and it will decompose into its two components, carbon dioxide and water. Uh, the process of uh, losing an equivalent of carbon dioxide is called decarboxylation, and we're actually going to see a lot of that in our next video. However, derivatives of carbonic acid can actually be pretty stable. This first one um, is actually not our example of something stable, but this is phosgene. This was actually used as a chemical warfare agent in World War I. Um, this would be a toxic gas. And uh, however, phosgene is very useful because it is very reactive. Notice that it's an acid chloride, but it actually has two chlorine groups on it. So depending on what you add to the reaction, you can create some pretty cool derivatives. So in this case, we have a diester. This would be called diethyl carbonate. So notice it still follows our ester protocol. Uh, we're referencing our alcohol, the fact that we have two of them, and the carboxylate that they would have come from. And we have two equivalents of hydrochloric acid as our side product. If we were to add in ammonia in excess, you would actually end up displacing both chlorines with amines, creating a diamide. And this one has a very special name. It is urea. Urea is a major component in um, urine. And the side product would be two equivalents of ammonium chloride salt. And then in our last example here, uh, if you were to take just one equivalent of alcohol and react it with phosgene, you could selectively displace only one chlorine. And in that situation, you would form what is called an alkyl chloroformate, which we will see in just a second is a really, really great um, material for synthesis. 
So for example, if we react benzyl alcohol with phosgene, we are going to end up creating benzyl chloroformate. And I'd like to take a second to break down uh, where this name comes from. So benzyl is going to represent the alcohol that was used to make the ester. And then formate is representing the fact that this is a derivative of formic acid. And the chloro indicates that the hydrogen on formic acid was replaced with chlorine. Uh, if we take in alkyl chloroformate, or sorry, uh, alkyl, yeah. If we take an alkyl chloroformate and react it with a primary amine in the presence of base, we will end up creating uh, a new functional group that has both an ester and an amide. This is called a carbamate. And another term to describe this functional group would be urethane. So this is actually the functional group formed in the polymers um, that are called polyurethanes. And then I accidentally kept going even though I was supposed to stop. So all the rest of chapter 17 is in one video, but it's not too long, I promise.